All right. Hey, how you doing? My name is Jamie. Thanks again for stopping by. And uh, yeah, we got the weekend uh, coming up once again. It's a Friday. Uh, I've got some uh, thrift store value village uh, finds that I'd like to uh, show you on this one. Uh, this one is surprisingly an all Canadian edition. Now, Rob at Vinyl 79 has got great advice for uh, looking for albums on thrift stores. I've always been just amazed at what Rob finds at thrift stores and you know bargain things like that like just amazing amazing records and i'm like how does he find these and part of his advice is definitely to you got to keep checking in almost on a daily basis and where that's not always easy it is good advice because sometimes stuff is there and then suddenly it's gone so rob's advice is good i still have never found anything quite or even close to the some of the treasures that Rob finds in some of the, you know, thrift stores and whatnot. But I did, I have been checking in because a lot of times it's always, you know, you get frustrated when you're, you know, it's another Lawrence Welk album, it's another this or that, you know, it's another Don Hole record, whatever, that sort of thing. Uh, but I did uh, pop in uh, just a few days ago and found the band Toronto, which was kind of a, a rock pop band, uh, the late 70s, early 80s, had a number of hits, but it was almost, it was virtually their entire collection that was sitting there and I hadn't seen it you know certainly the day or two before so this was quite a, a, a surprise find for me and I do like collecting a lot of Canadian stuff so Toronto was a band again from the late 70s early 80s had a number of hits so we'll go through and show you their albums and this is almost their entire collection uh, with the exception of one album so I was pretty pleased to see that all just sitting there so here's their first album this is Toronto and looking for trouble and, uh, yeah, this rather uh, problematic cover, shall we say. In, interesting in the States, this was released under a different cover. Uh, but this uh, certainly had their early hit to even the score, and this came out in the late 70s, I think 1979, and they were on the Solid Gold label, and they were produced by Bill Henderson and Brian McLeod on this one, who are members of Chilliwack. And the group, uh, of course, named after the uh, city of Toronto, and uh, they were led by a singer, her name was Holly Woods, Anne Holly Woods, on the, uh, on the solid gold label, which was also the Chilliwack label, but as you can see on the first one, they put Toronto right on the, on the label there. And again, it's, uh, you know, if you like Pat Benatar, you would like uh, Toronto. And I understand also that this uh, album cover was initially going to be the album cover for Max Webster's uh, High Class and Borrowed Shoes. I guess the band didn't go with this one, so this cover was then instead used for Toronto's uh, debut album, reportedly. But uh, there you go, and this is, and that's Hollywood's there. Okay. So that's the first album, and second album, uh, Toronto Head On. And this one was also, of course, on the Solid Gold label. And this was produced by Terry Brown, who produced uh, many of the Rush records, or certainly most of the early Rush records. That, and again, it's again on the Solid Gold label. Not a ton of hits off this album, surprisingly. Uh, I think en Enough is Enough might have been a hit. Kind of the stylized uh, label there. And then their next album, uh, this is Toronto and Get It On Credit. Now this contains the big hit, Your Daddy Don't Know, uh, which got a lot of radio play. Also, Start Telling the Truth got a ton of radio play. And here they're kind of down to a four-member band. They were a six-member band earlier. They had a lot of members come and go. Um, now, what's a fun fact about this one is that during the sessions of this, uh, a couple of the band members wrote a song called What About Love? Uh, they recorded it, uh, but then the band decided uh, not to release the song. Uh, the song was also uh, co-written by uh, Jim Valance, who uh, co-wrote stuff with uh, Brian Adams. So the band recorded What About Love, decided not to release it. Some of the band members who wrote the song were upset uh, that they did not release the song and wound up leaving the band. They then gave that song, What About Love, to Hart uh, years later. And that was one of Hart's big comeback singles, What About Love, and they took it into the top ten. So that song by Hart, What About Love, was originally recorded by the band Toronto. And you can find uh, What About Love on the CD version of their greatest hits. So there you go, T Toronto, and get it on credit. A little fun fact for you there. 
this is the only one that seems to be missing something uh, in terms of, uh, this is actually like a 3D cover. This is the album Girls' Night Out, and there would have been 3D glasses included inside. However, they don't seem to be uh, included in this. But as you can see, that sort of 3D cover, uh, Girls' Night Out, a hit, and uh, again on the solid gold label. Okay, and then they released a uh, Toronto's Greatest Hits, and it's ironic that it includes two previously unreleased songs, but one of them is not, well, What About Love? But this, of course, gives you all the hits and the rundown of the albums here, uh, that sort of thing. And then um, they then released an album called, Ho they decided to then call themselves Hollywoods and Toronto, released another album after this, but I don't have that one. And I understand that the band was actually then uh, forced to break up or forced to cancel their tour uh, because Solid Gold Records, uh, their label, uh, went bankrupt. And so, but Toronto now, I believe, has reunited uh, with some of the members, and I think one of the members from Saga is currently part of uh, this, the new Toronto. And I don't know if they're calling themselves just Toronto or Hollywoods in Toronto, but they are actually still going. Certainly with a few different members, but still with uh, Hollywood's uh, lead vocals. Okay, so there you have a bit of uh, Toronto. Uh, and now we've got uh, more uh, Canadian content, shall we say. Also, I uh, picked this up just yesterday. Uh, I was surprised to see, because you don't often see uh, Stompin' Tom Connors uh, in, the, in the sort of bargain bins. At least some of the older stuff that's kind of hard uh, to find. So this is, if you're not familiar with Stompin' Tom Connors, I don't know what you could say. It's kind of country punk uh, in my uh, estimation because uh, Stompin' Tom kind of went against all the rules, uh, wasn't really necessarily after the hits, has a very sort of different kind of full-on style. Country punk is, is the only way I really can describe Stompin' Tom, but uh, Bud the Spud from the bright red mud, and uh, certainly Stompin' Tom singing about uh, songs of Canada, and certainly particularly out east, but uh, he is a perennial favorite, but uh, yeah, this one has uh, Bud the Spud, and also the Ketchup song, and uh, he's always, it has a lot of humor through a lot of uh, his music, but uh, the one, the only Stompin' Tom, and this was on Boot Records, uh, which I was not familiar with. Uh, at one time, Capitol had uh, acquired Stop and Tom's uh, material, but this is uh, on Boot Records. So that's kind of neat. And then there was another Stomp and Tom Connors record there, which, much to my surprise, it was Stomp and Tom Connors' The My Stompin' Grounds, still in the shrink. Yeah, and as I said, he would often sing about, you know, Canadian things, oh, and he only focused on Canadian things. Like they just got a track called "The Snowmobile Song," a uh, tribute to Wilf Carter, "My Stomping Grounds," song "Tilsonburg." My back still aches when I hear that word, Tilsonburg, Ontario. And, one the, and again, this is also on the Boot Records. So there you go. Okay, here's an album I have on uh, CD, on a single CD version, but was uh, pleased to pick this up in the bargain bins. Uh, this is the Irish Rovers and uh, Greatest Hits. Uh, yes, the Irish Rovers, they were Irish uh, immigrants who settled uh, in Canada, uh, had, had a TV show back in the day, and uh, this is a single CD, but a double album, so this has the unicorn and just about everything you would need from the Irish Rovers. A little bit of water, it's a uh, gateful, uh, surprisingly, a little bit of water damage here, uh, but you don't really see it so much on the outside, which is okay. And nice little right up there. Members of the band. And then the records are housed uh, inside like that, which I thought was rather unique. And these were on the MCA label. So yes, the Irish Rovers. Ah, uh, the unicorn. Okay, so that is going to wrap it up uh, for this one. So I just thought that those were sort of unique finds, at least uh, for me. I mean, they're not uh, some of the things that uh, Rob at Vinyl79 finds uh, when he's out and about. But I guess, yeah, the key is, if you're going through the bargain bins or thrift stores, it is good to keep checking in and <laughs> try not to be like me and get so discouraged sometimes when you're looking, because you keep seeing the same albums over and over again. And a lot of it obviously depends on the area. Like, you know, if you're in a well-populated area, you might uh, obviously get a little 
little bit more selection as opposed to a less populated area. So there's a lot of uh, determining factors uh, certainly into that. But keep digging, keep <laughs> keep searching. That's that's the main thing. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up uh, for this one. I've certainly got a busy weekend uh, where I live. Uh, we have uh, what's called a Winterfest event, which is kind of like a big free uh, outdoor thing for families uh, happening uh, in Stratford. So if you're uh, here, uh, you can check the details online, Stratford Winterfest. And uh, if you're in the area and it's going to be a cold and snowy one, uh, please do feel free to drop by. I'm part of the committee with that, so we're certainly involved uh, with that. So I've got to get out the long johns and the woolly socks uh, for this weekend for sure. Okay, so I hope you have a good one, and uh, we'll chat again really soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.